Hi guys, welcome back for episode number 22 of the weekly playback. I am racing against time here because it is 4.45 p.m. when I'm starting to record on a Saturday. I did not record on Friday during my lunch break like I typically do because I hurt my back yesterday. I pulled a muscle and it, I just was not in any condition to shoot a video. So anyway, it's going to be a really short video anyway. Um, oh, I'm racing against time because the sun is setting and I usually rely on some daylight for some lighting. So yeah. So you're going to start seeing it get really dark on this side while I am talking. Um, so it was a very light gaming week. Um, I've only got two games to talk about. Um, so yeah, but hopefully things will get back on track next week. Um, I'm hoping that game nights will start to resume. Um, we'll see what happens. So the first game I'm going to talk about is Hike, which is currently on Kickstarter. And I did a one minute overview video of this game. Um, I'm going to butcher the designer's names. I think they're Polish. I don't even know if I should even try to pronounce them. Um, so I'm just going to pronounce their first names because the last names I have no idea. So Nika and Blas, an art by Paulina Watch or walk, I'm not sure, and published by Snowboard Games. So this is a game for two to six players and you can watch my one minute overview video if you want to know how to play this. It is like a racing game. Well, it's a kind of like a pattern building game. So you are assembling your team of husky dogs to then compete in a race. And I want to talk a little bit about the ethics of uh, husky sledding after I talk about the mechanics of this game and how it plays. Um, so you will have a team of eight husky dogs and once the first person has announced that their team is ready and basically you're going to be taking turns drafting cards and drafting different kinds of equipment and care cards which you'll then be using later in the game um, and then once the person announces that they're ready to race then the other players only have three more rounds to prepare their sleds and if they don't then they're out of the race and then you're going to be using the various huskies you have with the various symbols on them to race over terrain types uh, over a series of days and care cards come into play because if you use a certain husky you can't use that husky again because it's tired so you'll be placing a cube on it um, and care cards will allow you to use that husky again in the same day and equipment cards will allow you to give huskies that have only one movement point an additional movement point so you know it's a real balance uh, in the first part of the game the preparations part of the game when you're preparing your husky sleds you know because you have the opportunity of drafting equipment cards and care cards but at the same time you don't want to fall too behind in preparing your husky sled because you can only take one action per turn and as a bonus action you can add a young husky to your sled which will help you to complete your sled but of course will not give you any movement points so it's really a balance in the beginning of the game trying to keep an eye on what other people are doing are they preparing their husky sleds are they not are they going to get them ready before you um, you know and you're also getting uh, an idea of which kind of huskies you want um, based on which care uh, which um, landscape cards come up because you can see in each round during the pre preparations phase which landscape cards are coming up and I can just show you some examples so like this one and you have to when you use your huskies you can't like jump around and be like okay this husky is going to go over this part and this part you have to basically go in order which makes it difficult um, so it is a tricky game and it's not as simple as it looks to, you know, the eye at the beginning when you just like are kind of like learning about this game. You might think it's a very easy game. It's not a very easy game. It is a fun game, but it can be a bit challenging um, as well, which I like. So yeah, so, you know, it is a balance in keeping, you know, track of what you're doing and hoping that you don't fall too far behind. Um, here are some equipment cards. Those are what equipment cards look like. Here, um, you know, this is a prototype and I do believe that they're going to be adjusting some stuff um, and this is what a care card looks like and they also have uh, two care cards like a, uh, a double care card which you would use on huskies in the same column so yeah so it is a fun game um, I do hope that they um, you know maybe have an upgrade to these cubes instead of cubes if they had like husky shaped um, tokens I think that would be a lot of fun I like the artwork uh, in these in this game a lot I think the huskies are really pretty I really really love them um, what else yeah um, let me just show you some huskies this prototype did make it a little bit difficult because these cards are not like the best quality cards however in the production copy they've now reached the sled uh the sled goal <laughs> the, the um what is it called not sled goal why am i thinking sled 
stretch goal, stretch goal. They have reached the stretch goal for, um, for having linen finished cards. So that will be really, really nice. Yeah, I'm um, sorry that these cards are a wreck right now. But yes, so that is Hike. Now, when I had agreed to do a video for this game, I did not do any research, which is kind of weird. Like usually when a game involves animals of any kind, I want to do some research about the ethics behind it. Um, I don't know why it did not even cross my mind because I know about the horrors of greyhound racing. Like that is something I'm very familiar with. So I don't even know why it did not cross my mind to do any research about uh, sled dog racing, uh, you know, up north in Canada and Alaska. So it turns out that, you know, like any activity that is going to use animals for entertainment, uh, there is the possibility of exploitation and abuse. And there are, you know, some severe cases of abuse and exploitation of dogs being treated very badly, of dogs being, you know, shot and killed if they cannot keep up, if they, you know, if the people who own them realize that they're not good for the team. You know, there's uh, instances of dogs being starved and beaten and just, you know, discarded and uh, killed in a very inhumane way. Um, of course, you shouldn't kill any animal that you find is not of use to you. So, um, you know, the inhumane part is actually kind of irrelevant. They should not be killed at all. But, you know, of course, they are killed in, in very inhumane ways. So, um, when someone brought light to this on the Kickstarter Commons page, I did do my own research into it. And yes, there are people who do take very good care of their dogs. Like, uh, you know, I've been around Huskies a number of times. I have a number of friends who own Huskies. I think they're absolutely beautiful dogs. I really, really love them. And they are very active dogs. They do like to remain active. And so, of course, there are going to be Huskies who do love racing and love getting that physical activity. But of course, there are going to be very bad apples out there who do abuse animals. So I did do research and um, I did come across an organization that um, rescues these husky dogs who you know who are being retired or have been treated badly and so i donated all the proceeds that i made from uh shooting this one minute video to that organization um to just kind of hopefully um you know counteract any or counterbalance i don't know what the word is i'm looking for any negative stuff that might come you know from people you know buying the scheme or you know not being aware of what husky dogs really go through like you know the ones who are exploited and i've encouraged the publisher to make a donation as well and to include a link to that organization on the campaign page i will include a link in the description in this video um, and i do hope that the publisher will in fact do that um, so yeah so we'll see what happens um, but yeah so i did not profit from making this uh one minute overview video for this game because you know i did want to give back to the dogs um, and yeah, so just, you know, be an ethical consumer and I will try better myself as well um, to be a better, more ethical consumer. Um, but yeah, it is a fun game. It's not as easy as it looks. And I do think, you know, with the, I also forgot to mention, but I did mention it in my one overview minute overview video, of course, that it is like also a pattern building game. So it is harder and harder to draft dogs and you know get your sled ready because you have to match all the borders the you know the color so if you have like a green border you know the top dog has a bottom green border then the bottom dog is going to need a top green border and they need to match on the sides as well so the two colors you're trying to match are green and pink and so yeah so it does become difficult however the young huskies don't need to match so yeah it's not as simple as it looks it is fun i don't know you know how much replayability it'll have um but you know it's a fun game it'll be definitely be like a fun filler game for sure um so yeah so check out hike if you would like and the next game i'm going to talk about in the last game <laughs> but i do have a number of games to show you that arrived so um yeah we can talk about that as well so the next game I'm going to talk about is Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden. Now, if you watch any of my videos, you will know that I absolutely adore this game. So I actually have an insert from the Game Foundry on Etsy. And this insert is amazing because number one, it holds sleeve cards, which is very, oh, I f which is very important to me. Sorry, I forgot to go over the important information. Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden is designed by, let me just uh, pull up the information. Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden is designed by Todd Sanders 
and oh he actually did the art for it as well wow and it's published by Ludi Creations and then there's another one Air and Nothingness Press and then TGG Games as well I know has published has had partnered with them to publish some games in America so yeah so going back to this insert I absolutely love it it's from Etsy the Game Foundry and it holds sleeved cards and in fact when I prepared the cards to play like you have to shuffle a number of cards and place them on top of three on holiday cards on holiday cards is when your pesky neighbors start visiting and when they appear the on holiday cards and the neighbors will interfere with the garden that you're preparing so when I prepare my deck of cards with the three on holiday cards I actually just put it right in here and then you know it made for really nice playing without the cards toppling over and then th the insert holds all the different um, neighbor tokens really nicely um, so let me just show you yeah, so it holds all the tokens really nicely and then it has even another little one for like the um, player aids and then the on holiday cards and some of the other expansion cards which I haven't played with yet like the grasshopper um, yeah and so then you have your pesky neighbors so you at the beginning of the game are going to pick out four neighbors and you'll also have a bee uh, tile and then you'll have a brassica tile um, and you are going to each round be picking up a vegetable card and placing it into your garden and each vegetable card has a point value associated with it it has tells you how many there are in the entire deck and then this round number here is how many neighbor tokens you you will pick up I'll get to that in a minute and then this is the vegetable number so all the vegetables have a number associated with them so after you pick up a vegetable card to place into your garden you are then going to look at the two remaining cards and determine how many tokens you need to pull out by looking at the highest vegetable number and then pulling out that many number of tokens so if these were the two cards left over this is the higher vegetable number and I would need to pull out three neighbor tokens so the way I do it is um, I put all the tokens in this burlap burlap bag and then I pull them out um, rather than having them face down on the table, which I think um, is not as effective because after an on holiday card is revealed, you are going to look at the neighbor tile that has the most number of tokens on it and then uh, do the effect on the back of that tile, which usually ends up removing a vegetable from your garden. Um, and then the tokens get shuffled back in. So that's why I think it's better to just put them in the bag rather than face down on the table as the rule book says. Um, so yeah, so I really love this game. I think it's really challenging. So you are basically going to score for any vegetables in your garden. Let me just show you the play mat because it might make it visually easier. So you are going to, in the end, have a garden that looks that is filled up with vegetables and there may be empty slots but it's going to be six across and three high and you will score the points for any vegetables that are adjacent to other vegetables of their own kind if you have a veg vegetable that is not adjacent to a vegetable of its own kind either above below or to the left or to the right then you do not get the points for it and you if you ended up removing a vegetable while playing you will get minus two points for each vegetable you removed and then there are different awards you can score for so the different types of awards are what you know really makes this game um you know that's where you're going to get the bulk of your points um so the different kinds of awards let me just show you so what I've learned from multiple plays of this game now is that you really have to try to kind of decide beforehand which awards you're going for and it is difficult so like the promenade is one that I always try to go for so if you can get um, three sets of vegetables with two each in that kind of formation either this one or this one then you will score 14 points um, there's the monopoly where you want like five or more vegetables together um, you have this one which I have not been able to score and I have tried very hard the mixed plot you need exactly three vegetables in each row um, and, and uh, three different types of vegetables in each row in order to score 30 points and you cannot have repeats in the rows um, so I've, I'm starting to realize that there are some awards that you cannot work with others that just do not work with others like here you have the avenue and the four corners 
Um, you know, so there are some that you just cannot do. So it seems impossible to get the mixed plot if you're trying to go for something else as well. I have not been able to, able to score the mixed plot, which would give you 30 points. Um, typically I get the promenade and if I'm lucky, I might get something else, but I'm, you know, I like this game because it does give you a lot of variability. There's lots of variability in the vegetable neighbors you are picking and they have, and the artwork is just so freaking cool. I absolutely love the artwork. It's very uh, interesting. It's very unique. And also you do have bees. Um, so the bees, when you uh, have your three vegetables, the first one will cost one bee to take. The middle one is free. And then the last one will gain you a bee if you take that. So that's something that you also take into consideration because if you have all the bees in your possession, once the final on holiday card comes up and you do final scoring, you can also score some additional points that way. I think it's six points if I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, so this is a really fun game. I absolutely love it. It's like one of my favorite solo games. Um, so yeah, so I played this a couple of times in the last week. Um, so that's why I am showing it to you. I think that is the gist of this game. But yeah, if you like quirky artwork and you like vegetables and you like solo gaming, then I would definitely say check out um, Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden. I got the play mat from the Kickstarter. So I had backed the reprint Kickstarter because originally this was just a print and play game, I believe. And then they did a Kickstarter. And then once he started the... Um, guy the owner i think of ludi creations once um and these are the b tokens by the way this is the deluxe version with the b tokens in the burlap bag and once the um um once ludi Creations started receiving their production samples of the game he had reached out to me to see if i would be able to do a one minute overview video of this game so i did um, but i had already backed the game on kickstarter anyway and so i got the um the uh, playmat, which, you know, it's not the most amazing playmat. It's not even neoprene. It's like some weird fake leathery uh, material, but I do like it. I just, I just really like playing with the playmat when I play this game, but it's not necessary. Um, but I like, you know, and you can make the game more difficult but if you play with the playmat because your rows and columns are fixed. Typically when you play, uh, things don't become fixed unless you, um, like, the rule book tells you like once you have something in a certain column in a certain row then your rows and columns are fixed but if you're playing with the play mat they're basically fixed from the very beginning which of course does you know make it more difficult so yeah so i really love this game a lot and uh so if you're into solo gaming i would say definitely check it out so that was the other game i played this week but i will go into all the games now that i have received um, in this last week and I am hoping to play them. So yeah, so let me just put this away. Okay. So, oh, let me go into games I am backing. So of course I am backing Hike um, at the um, $1 level so that I can be credited with a production copy. Um, I, you know, honestly, I don't know if I, if it's a game I would back if I were, had not been, um, you know, asked to do a video for it. I probably would, to be honest, just because it's a little bit unique and even Rado really liked it. Um, you know, and they're, you know, people are really excited about the scheme. There's a lot of comments about it. Um, yeah, so maybe I would because I actually really do like Huskies and I don't know of any other game that has Huskies. I think someone else had mentioned one more, but I don't know. I can't even remember the name of it now, but someone in the comment had mentioned another game with Huskies in it. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'm backing Hike. I um, In the culling section, I'm happy to report that I have sold, I sold, what did I sell? I sold Lisboa and god i recently shipped off another game that i was like excited to have shipped off um but yeah i can't remember which one now but uh currently no other additions to the culling section so let me show you some games that i have received recently and then after that i will go into questions so i had bat uh, not backed bought a uh, used copy of speakeasy blues um, this is designed by daryl andrews and adrian adamescu and the artwork is, I don't know, um, Heiko Gunther, cover art Don Whitson, and it's published by Artana. So the reason I ended up buying this is because when I had discussed 1923 Cotton Club in a video, someone had commented that I might enjoy this since it also has kind of a similar theme to do with 1920s and like jazz clubs and like, you know, prohibition. 
so yeah so i ended up buying it i do really like the uh the art deco artwork and components in here like it has these cool bottles which i really like um but yeah it's uh it looks like a fun game i'm excited to try it out it comes with these like player boards i don't know how to play yet um this is a game i've been dying to play um since it arrived last week um but have not had a chance yet but let me just show you the board so yeah so I am looking forward to playing this and see how it plays and whether I like it better than 1923 Cotton Club. Um, I don't know if I had started my weekly playback videos yet at this point in time when I had played um, the game. Um, it's also about Prohibition, Capone. I actually really liked Capone. If you guys haven't checked out Capone and you're into 1920s uh, themed games, definitely check it out. It's uh, got like an, a bidding mechanism in it and it's like kind of like secret bidding and you're trying to you know uh get a certain number of like bottles of certain things and attract certain customers to your establishment i really loved capone and it has amazing components i had a lot of fun while playing it so you know if you're into the 1920s theme definitely check out capone i don't remember who the um publisher is but um yeah check that out all right another game that i received is it's huge so i'm not gonna open it up completely merchants of the dark road so i had backed the all-in version on kickstarter and i got number 05115 of 10,000, which i like because it's very symmetrical 5115 um so i'm super excited to play this um so unfortunately i do not have the metal coins to show you because my metal coins were left out so i have contacted them and hope that that can be rectified because i think everyone is saying that the coins are some of the nicest part of this game uh, the, interestingly the board it's like you put it together and you have to put it together in a certain way i believe because there's like numbers along the edge so i'm really like that's really interesting that the board just is not like a folding board it's just like a big board that you put together and i wonder why i don't know if there's like a specific reason for that or i don't know um this is really nice these individual player boards that are dual layered so things can fit nicely into them and then of course the insert um, has these two big giant things so one holds all of the wooden like uh not wooden um cardboard tokens of various kinds and then this one oh my god this big one took me forever to figure out where things go i feel like the instructions were not super clear on it like it just tells you like okay it tells you that in the big one all this stuff goes but it doesn't tell you exactly where or how maybe i'm just too stupid to be able to figure it out but finally i was able to figure it out <laughs> so so i did um and one of the things i don't like about this game it, um, the insert is that you know it has some really amazing components but then it also has some really tiny cardboard components and um the space for these really tiny cardboard components is in the big insert thing and i'm just afraid that they're just going to like get lost or or something especially when you like pick up the box and things get shuffled around as they already have um, I'm just worried about that. I know I'm a bit of a worry wart, but that just kind of annoys me. I just wish that they had a bit more of a secure space for the tiny little cardboard ones. Um, but yeah, my dice have already gotten like shuffled around and I can't get them back in. But I really like these dice. Like they've got these like little stars on them. They're pretty. Um, but yeah, I'm super looking forward to playing this game. And now I've made a mess. Um, I know that like Alex from uh, Board Game Co did an unboxing so if you want to see an unboxing a proper one you can go watch his video because <laughs> this is not an unboxing video and now I cannot get stuff back in properly or um, let me see what else I can show yeah no I'm not gonna go in there um, yeah these nice little wooden carriages um, not a huge fan of the colors but I guess it goes with a the theme maybe I don't know like winter wonderland I don't know maybe I think I would have preferred like some darker colors like purple blue green um, but whatever um so yeah so that is uh merchants of the dark road so I'm excited to have received my pledge for that oh let me just show you these bags um, one second let me just get this back in if I can um yeah so it comes with these bags which are really nice for the coins 
and I like that the nice and board embroidered bags um so yeah so I'm super excited to hopefully play this at some point but like I said I do think in a, in a previous video I mentioned that it looks like it's going to be a big table hog and yeah it definitely looks like it's going to be a big table hog so I don't know exactly how I'll be able to play this I don't think I'll be able to play it on my own table I think I'm going to have to play it elsewhere but yeah, um, it did take me a while to unbox the whole thing, punch everything out and get everything into the inserts. But again, th that might be because I'm not the brightest one looking at that sheet. I need like, I need like a sheet that tells me exactly where everything goes and like lays it out really well. And I just don't think that that sheet did that. But in the end, I figured it out. So, <laughs> okay. Um, the next game that arrived and it arrived a bit late, I wish it had arrived sooner is Christmas tree. Um, so let me just arrived yesterday so I had pre-ordered this from Board Game Blitz and I was hoping to play it over Christmas because I was like I don't have any games which are just truly like Christmas themed like I have winter themed games um, but nothing that is actually just exactly like just Christmas so this is designed by Balaz Naji I think that says um, published by Clever Green Games I guess and I don't know who does the artwork um yeah i don't know okay so let's just open it up and see oh it looks like you're going to be making a christmas tree and all my tokens have come unpunched basically <laughs> so it's got these snowflake tokens um and it's got yes and it's got some cards um i don't know let's see what's on them Oh, that's pretty. I do love Christmas. Yeah, so it's got a bunch of cards um, with cookies and gingerbread men and like some other stuff. And then it looks like there's some scoring cards of some kind. Um, yeah, so I think you're just decorating a Christmas tree, basically. Uh, that's what it looks like. And it looks like there's more of the same, maybe. Let me see if there's any like lights and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, there are like lights and stuff too, and stars, yeah. So yeah, it's a pretty game and I'm like looking forward to it. Um, the quality seems nice, yeah. So um, I guess I will have to wait until next Christmas to play this unless I can actually get someone to play it with me before next Christmas. I don't know if anyone will want to, but um, it's nice to have a Christmas themed game that is like actually Christmas Christmas, yeah. Um, so I guess you just put together these trees and it seems nice quality um, this cardboard seems pretty thick and uh, sturdy like it won't bend um, so that's good um, so yeah so that is that and then along with this I had ordered um, let's just show you the other game I had ordered that just arrived this tiny little game called Kariba. Now, Kariba I got because it has an elephant on it, which is the only reason I got it, to be honest. It's a Rainer Knizia game for two to four players, and it plays in 15 minutes, so I think it's like some kind of a filler game. So let me just open it. Let's see. Wow, a bunch of rules in different languages on the top. And then it has some kind of little things. I don't know what these are for. And then let's see what these cards look like. How do I open this? Do, 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 do. Okay, why can I not open this? There we go. Okay, looks like you've got a mouse. What is that, an otter? It looks like an otter. I think it's an, or maybe a meerkat actually. It's probably a meerkat, a zebra, giraffe. Yeah, I'm guessing it's a meerkat. Like why would an otter be in Africa? An ostrich, cheetah, and then, is that, oh yeah, rhino. And then your elephant. So I have no idea what this game is about or how it plays. Um, I'm assuming it's some kind of a set collection game. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. It says Africa's hot and water is scarce. The animals want to find a water hole where they can refresh themselves. Of course, every animal wants to be the first to drink. And so the elephant chases away the rhino and the rhino chases away the mouse. Oh, it's a mouse. 
Oh, that was a mouse. I did say it was a mouse. Okay. But it is well known that elephants are afraid of mice. Therefore, the little mouse chases away the elephant. Okay. What is the objective? Goal of the game. Win the most cards possible. Okay. Uh, I feel like it needed a little bit more backstory. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess they all just want a place around the watering hole and you just need to win the most cards possible. Um, okay. Yeah, it looks like that. So I guess that's what the game is about. Um, so yeah, it looks like a nice little filler game and I'm looking forward to playing it, especially with all the animals. So that is another game I got recently. So yeah, if you have any of these games, let me know what you think of them. And I hope to play them soon. So I do know I'm going to be having a proper game night again this Wednesday and I am playing some virtual games uh, tonight and on Monday. So I'm looking forward to that over at Board Game Arena or Savanti. Sovereignty, sovereignty, and um, Tabletopia, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, let's move on to questions now. So the first question is, when you teach a game that you have played before, do you hold back a bit while helping the other players around the table, or do you just let everyone sink or swim? I very, I very rarely win a game I teach, yet I still have a great time playing, play, <coughs> excuse me. It's not the winning for me. <coughs> oh my gosh, I have something stuck in my throat. It's not the winning for me as much as playing the game and the social interaction that I enjoy while introducing the game to others. It's nice to have a new player to play the game win. Thoughts? Um, yeah, so when I teach a game to people, if it's one that I've played many times, I do kind of help them along if they need it, especially if they're not gamer gamers. So like with my family, um, like when I'm playing Porto with them, um, they're not gamer gamers. So I might like, you know, um, well, not so much with Porto because we've played that a number of times now, but with like another game, I might be like, okay, I think you want to kind of do this. You know, this is what I would do if I were you, um, just because I think it'll be a better turn for you. So, you know, I do kind of help them along in that way. I still try to win because I, you know, I'm someone who, if I play a new game with someone, I don't want them to just let me win. I don't think I would enjoy a game if people go easy on me. So I, you know, maybe it's wrong for me to assume that other people feel the same way but, but when I teach a game to people I assume that they you know also feel that way and that's kind of like why I still play competitively um but yeah that's that's how I am um do I hold back not really like I said I still play competitively um I still try to do my best um you know, I've definitely taught games to people and they've beat me at the games I've taught them. So, you know, I, I'm not the best board game player, so I don't think I need to hold back. But, you know, if I'm playing with an audience that is not a gaming gaming audience, then maybe I might hold back a little bit. But I do, you know, if people want it, I'll help them along by suggesting stuff to them. If I know the strategy of the game and I think I'm good at it, then I might help them. Um, you know, which some people have appreciated, but I know not everyone appreciates that. Um, so, you know, if they let me know, then I, you know, would be able to act more accordingly. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that was a very uh, good answer or helpful answer, <laughs> but yeah. Um, the next question is, does it feel like this year is shaping up to be better? Um, uh, given everything that's happened in the past year, I don't know. Um, you know, I think going to PAX helped a bit, you know, meeting people at PAX and seeing that there are people who like my content um, and, you know, appreciate my videos and everything. I think that helped, um, you know, I, you know, I try to focus on the positive. I'm trying harder to focus on the positive, trying harder to focus on the publishers who do want to work with me, who do like having a relationship with me, the people who do watch my content. Um, you know, but it does, I'm human, so it does get to me that there are publishers who think I'm like this evil, horrible person and don't want to have anything to do with me. And of course I do, you know, get afraid that, you know, it's going to impact my content creation career more and more. So, you know, that's a worry I have. And, you know, I think it'll always kind of be a worry because um, I don't know if, you know, if, you know, the publishers who have me blacklisted will ever unblacklist me. Like, I don't know if, you know, things at this point are irreversible. Like these people who have formed such, you know, strong opinions about me based on lies and on garbage and on double standards. Like, I don't know if any of that is, you know, fixable or not. Um, but, you know, I think the year is going okay so far. Um, uh, I guess we'll see. <laughs> you know, it's still early. It's still January. 
Um, so yeah, I guess we'll see. I just hope that there's nothing ridiculous that happens this year. I hope that there's no, you know, uncalled for drama and stuff like that. So we'll see. Um, you know, I've already reached out to a designer of a big game that's coming out in a couple of months that I'm super looking forward to uh, covering for Kickstarter and he said that he is happy you know to have me cover it so so you know that was a nice thing to hear so I just hope that you know uh, people continue to want me to cover their games and that you know things go okay um, so far it's okay um, so far nothing really bad has happened so we'll see um, so those were all the questions for this month month week <laughs> this week okay so there we go and i hope i will be back next week with more games to talk about i'm really hoping to finally play bear raid i've been dying to play it um, so i think we're going to finally have a game night with more than me and just one other person on wednesday so i will see if people want to play bear raid um, and of course merchants of the dark road and of course you know um, speakeasy blues i'm really looking forward to playing that and of course a bunch of other games that i have that i really should be playing um so yeah so until next time bye <music>